Yo what's up Serpa Squad, Tanner here and I'm starting Pawn Season off right with something small. For this one I teamed up with the folks over at Aquascape to set up an Aqua Garden mini pond kit. Full disclosure I received this one for free but showing it does not include any sort of paid promotion or endorsement. Also near the end of the video I'll explain how you can win one of these pawns for yourself. In the meantime let's get to work. When all is said and done, this pond will only hold around 7 gallons or 26 and a half liters of water. Since it's small, I want to maximize the amount of water in the system for livestock while also making the best possible aesthetic. To do that I'll have to make a few modifications to hide as much of the hardware as possible. In this case the front of the spillway, the light bulb, and pump. Sandstone that I sourced from my backyard will do the job. Although I could just stack up the stones to conceal everything, it would significantly take away from the total volume of water in the basin. That's where the modifications come in. What I'll do is create a cantilever shelf of sorts using a piece of egg crate light diffuser and stainless steel wire. I cut out the egg crate ahead of time so it fits snugly under the spillway compartment. I'll attach it to this part of the pond with wire, but before that I had to drill a few holes. Two on either side to be specific. I fed the wire through these holes and around the back corners of the egg crate. This secured everything for the next step. I removed the spillway from the basin and drilled two holes in the back for the wire. With how the spillway is shaped, the egg crate needs a support on the back side for the proper cantilever effect. It just so happened that another piece of egg crate, combined with corrugated plastic, was the exact thickness needed. Anyway, these were slid into place, and then the wire was wrapped around the back corners of the platform. From there, I continued to weave the wire through the egg crate. When the ends met up in the center, they were twisted together and wired in the opposite directions. Once I got back to the beginning, I wrapped the wires together and removed the excess. To strengthen the platform and prevent bowing, I zip tied a PVC pipe to the underside. After all of that, this is what I ended up with. It's not pretty, but it will easily hold the weight of the stones. With the platform in place, I stacked the stones until I got a stable arrangement that looked natural. In addition to the stones, I'm also using weathered driftwood to hardscape the waterfall area. I worked a large piece between two rock formations. The goal here was to hide the spillway while simultaneously allowing the lights to shine through the open spaces. After that I added more stones to the right side of the scape. From there I adjusted the current piece of driftwood and added a few more to finalize the layout. Although everything is wedged together, it's somewhat precarious. To strengthen the formation, I use great stuff gaps and cracks expanding foam. What I did was spray behind the stones in a few areas and let the foam sit for about 10 minutes. After that I went back and pressed the foam down into the cracks where it was applied. I continued to hide the spillway with more foam and stones. Again I waited a few minutes in between and pressed the excess foam down into the cracks. With that addressed we'll move on to the remainder of the build. The kit came with smooth river rocks, large pebbles, and leka. Out of the three I'm only using the leka. They were rinsed prior to going in the back of the spillway. The stones in the kit are supposed to conceal this layer, but I felt they would be difficult to plant in. Instead, I topped the leak out with a sheet of pre-cut window screen mesh to keep smaller particles out of this layer. For my additional planting mediums, I'll use Seachem Fluorite and a mixture of Seachem Fluorite Dark and Fluval Stratum. I started with a layer of red fluorite because it looks unappealing. I 
I topped it off with a layer of the other substrate mixture. This is what I ended up with. I think it looks pretty good, but the spillway is still visible. But to hide it completely, I added more stones, some of which were foamed in place. With all of that completed, we can finally bring this setup to life with the moss. For this one I'll use Hypno Moss, Tangled Thread Moss, Badge Moss, and Haircap Moss. I wedged tufts of moss throughout the design to hide the foam and make things look more seamless. As expected, the moss really brought this setup to life. Before moving any further, I wanted to test out the waterfall. I filled the basin and let it rip. Unfortunately, there was a slight issue with how I foamed the spillway and it began to overflow. I quickly unplugged the pump and I knew exactly where I went wrong. The stones I foamed to the top of the spillway caused the overflow level to rise higher than it should. Luckily, this was an easy fix. All I had to do was remove a few stones and bits of foam. I tested the waterfall out again and everything worked as it should. Now then, let's complete the design. I drained the water and added a few stones to the bottom for contrast. Then I poured in some fluval stratum for any aquatic plants I may add down the road. I filled the remainder of the basin with pea pebbles. To plant this one I'll use Marantaluca nera, Microsaur musifolium, Hemigraphus reponda, Ficus pumila quercifolia, Equisitum triceriale, Alternantha versicolor snowball, Cryptanthus nubicola, Acorus germinius minimus aureus, and Selaginella krausiana gold tips. A good selection overall, but there were a few limitations since I can't get anything else at the moment. Anyway, I went on to plant the upper portion of the spillway compartment. I started with the two largest plants, the prayer plant and ferns. Next were some of the accent plants including the horsetail, dragon's tongue, alternantra, and oak leaf creeping fig. Once all of those were situated, I filled the basin with water and adjusted the moss around the waterfalls. From there, I added the remainder of the plants including the Cryptanthus, Acorus, and Slaginella. Lastly, I pulled some Amazonian frog bit from my DIY patio pond and put it in this one. I'll link that video up above and down in the video description if you want to see how I built it. And here you have it, the completed Aqua Garden Mini Pond. I don't know about you, but I think it turned out great. I like how much of a feature the waterfall is and how the lights shine through. Overall, I also really like the selection of plants. That said, I wish I had a few taller plants, but I could always add those down the road. I just didn't have anything like that at the moment. I also need some recommendations on what I should stock this with. I have ideas, but I'll leave that up to you. I'll gather up all of the best suggestions and make a poll at a later time. Also, do you remember Ed from the Front Yard Pond build? If not, I'll link up that video. Anyway, Ed and I teamed up for this build. 
Both of us set up one of these mini ponds as a friendly competition. You've seen mine already, but Ed did a video on his channel as well. If you don't mind, can you go check out his build and let us know down in the comments who did it better. He's passionate about aquatic systems and is an absolute wealth of knowledge on the subject. All around great dude with a chilled out demeanor similar to my own. Now concerning the giveaway, here's what you need to do to win. Simply follow the link down in the video description to a post on my Instagram page. It gives all the details about how to win one of 5 Aqua Garden Mini Pond Kits. The giveaway closes at 12pm Eastern Standard Time on Monday, May 11th, and the winners will be chosen at random. Good luck! And that's all I have for you in this one. As always, I thank you so much for tuning in and for your continued support. I hope that you enjoyed this one and learned something new. Let me know what you think about the final design down in the comments. On that, I hope all of you are doing well. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.